Hello, everybody. Welcome to Beer Smith Podcast number 66. Got a great show for you today. We got some folks from Berlin joining us today to talk about brewing and uh, professional brewing education. Today's reminder uh, is to actually to go ahead and review the podcast if you enjoy it. You can review this podcast on iTunes if you enjoy our mobile application. I've been doing a lot of work on that, updating it recently. You can review that on Google Play. You can review it on iTunes. You can review it on Amazon. If you enjoy our other books, other other products like our book or, uh, or our CD, you can also review that on Amazon. And those reviews help us uh, give us feedback, and we really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And now, without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. Today on the show, my guest is Berghard Meyer from the Research and Teaching Institute for Brewing in Berlin, so-called VLB. Berghard has a formal education in biotechnology, brewing, and malting. He's also the head instructor for international courses, including the certified brewmaster course, brewing technology, and craft brewing courses. He's being supported today by Jan Beering, who has an engineering degree in brewing science and also teaches at the VLB. It's fantastic to have you on the show, Berghard. There yeah, we go. to be here. Yep. <laughs> so uh, you work at the VLB in Berlin, and you're coming to us directly from Berlin, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's focused, uh, the VLB, of course, is focused on educating uh, professional brewers in, in Berlin. Um, how'd you get started in the in the business of educating brewers? Uh, well, the, the question is me or the VLB. The VLB is uh, uh, in this business since uh, 1883, so for uh, 130 years now, and it was founded as an association uh, by breweries and uh, malteries uh, to support uh, the brewing industry with knowledge, uh, by teaching, and by research work and um well educating brewers so so how about you personally how did why did you get into brewing uh well first of all after after my a levels finishing the school i wanted to start to study forestry but uh there was a uh, a woman in the in the job center uh, who told me that with this job I was or studying this uh, I will never have contact to nature and I just sit in at the desk uh, the whole time and uh, this was nothing I really wanted to do so I decided to start an apprenticeship in a craft business and well beer sounded a very good nice idea uh, so I applied in in breweries and well. This made the start, yeah. So that's so that's how you found your passion for brewing, is that it? Yeah, in a brewery. Yeah. In a brewery, exactly. Which brewery did you start in? Uh, it was uh, the Bolton Alt Brewery uh, in Korschenburg. It's a small town near near Düsseldorf. And actually, it's the oldest Alt beer brewery of the world. It goes back to the year 1266. Wow. So it was a real nice, nice uh Experience and uh, and well, in starting the business. So you're making classic Dusseldorf alt beer there, huh? Uh, well, not not Dusseldorf alt beer, but uh, well, the alt beer like uh, at the at the Lower Rhine area. Excellent. There's a special area at the, at the Lower Rhine where uh, alt beer is brewed. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the state of craft brewing in Europe? I know it's exploding over here in the United States. What's what's happening in Europe? Uh, well, we always had craft brewing in Europe. That's well, true. Yeah. If, if you're if you're looking at the at the numbers of breweries, you have, uh, for example, in the United States, it's about two thousand five hundred uh, in the U.S. as breweries, and uh, well, just only in Germany nowadays we have approximately thirteen thousand. Uh, no, one thousand three hundred and forty. Uh, and if you're looking at Europe, it's about four thousand uh, seven hundred breweries. So. It is already here. But, you're, uh, the, you're way ahead of us. Yeah. So, uh, but 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 this this craft brewing movement, like it is in America, is also uh, starting again. Well, let's say we are having a revival of of beer styles, more or less, and also uh, small breweries are opening, like uh, craft breweries, micro breweries as well. So this number will increase further on so what are what are some of the you mentioned the revival in beer styles what are some of the beer styles you're seeing uh come back to life if you will i, I know i know for a while you know a number of them almost disappeared right 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, for, for example, uh, maybe you know uh, Horst Dornbusch. Uh, he uh, wrote a, a new book about uh, beer recipes, and with him, together with the VLB and uh, the Brewers Guild, uh, we brewed, for example, a Breuhan a couple of couple of weeks ago, and we had this also on the drink tag. Uh, so, well, those old beer styles. Uh, well, we have the feeling that very, very much of people are more and more interested in those beer styles again. Well, well, something new. Yeah. Even if it's a, if, if those uh, recipes are old recipes. So do you think do you think uh, the U.S. craft brewer uh, resurgence is pushing some of that maybe or no? Some of the, uh, pulling back some of the new style or some of the old styles I should say. Uh, well, I I think uh, with with all those uh, special beers from 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 the U.S. like like the IPAs and uh, the pale ales, all those uh, very hoppy beers and so on. Well, uh, I think. It's the consumers, the consumers uh, who are, meanwhile, again, interested in those beer styles. And, well, it is very helpful um, for, for the consumers as well here in Europe to uh, to drink those IPAs to wake up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it helps That's pretty strong. <laughs> I enjoy a good IPA. Um, well, I've seen a lot of homebrewers, you know, a lot of interest from homebrewers in becoming pro brewers now. And, uh, of course, a lot of them make the leap without any formal education. Uh, in fact, I was just over talking to a good friend of mine, uh, the other day who just, just started, a, started a brewery, literally, just with, you know, a 20 gallon pot and, and went out and got the licenses and started it. Um, why do you think, uh, why do you think a professional education is really important for craft brewers? <laughs> uh, well, if, if you're looking at the, the, the difference between, a Home brewer and the craft brewer. If you uh, want to to enter the business itself, yeah. Well, then uh, you must make sure that you are brewing with a constant quality. Uh, so, the different beer styles always have to taste in the same way, and it, they also have to have always the same quality. And this is, let's say, the challenge for for for, for the uh, craft brewers. And in here. Uh, to produce always a very, very, very high quality, you need, well, education. You need a deep knowledge of the brewing process and of uh, the processing of the raw materials. Uh, very, very deep. That if you, well, you have to see the, the raw materials are always changing their quality. The barley in this year has not the uh, same, same quality than the years before. And you have, as a brewer, you have to be able to react on this, and therefore you need this very, very, very deep knowledge about this. And um, how much time and money does it take to get a formal education in brewing, say, in Berlin? <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe to become a certified brewmaster, for example. Yeah. You know, if, if you want to become a certified brewmaster, you have to spend – well, the classes are running half a year. Mm -hmm. So starting in January, and uh, they will, fi uh, will be finished in the, in the end of June. Um, and it will cost about 14,500 14, euros, mm -hmm. uh, not including accommodation and so on. But that's, that's not that bad. Yes. I mean, that's six months uh, training. It's much less than a college education or something like that, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think also in the, in the comparison with other brewing schools, we are not really, uh, the most expensive school. Right, right. Um, what are some of the topics you cover along, along the way to becoming a certified brewmaster? <laughs> I'm sure there's, All. I'm All. sure there's quite a few, but, uh, yeah. but well, I think it'd be interesting to maybe discuss a few of them. Yeah. Well, well starting with, uh, uh, with brewery technology, uh, we, uh, in brewery technology, we are talking about the, the total process from the, from the beginning, from the milling or from storage to milling to the brew house work, uh, to fermentation and later on as well, uh, stability topics, stability topics, uh, like flavor stability and, and quality of stability and all that stuff. Um, we are covering the malting technology. Um, so the production of malt from the barley, to uh, the finished products, all the specialty malts uh, are also included. Um, then we are talking about, well, in, in, in the classes about plant equipment, um, the total topic of plant equipment in the malt race to the breweries. Further on, uh, there will be uh, basic lectures in chemistry, biochemistry. Biochemistry, you have to know biochemistry uh, in here in this field because you have to understand all the enzymatic uh, and bio. Technology, uh, technological processes uh, that take place during the brewing process. 
um, as well as lectures in microbiology, lectures in uh, sensory analysis, uh, lectures in water, lectures in wastewater lectures, yeah, um, lectures in chemical technical analysis. And next to all the all, all those lectures we have, we have also a real uh, a big program in. Um, uh, a practical program, so practical right. work. That means um, we have uh, once a week, um, including one day in the labs, um, in, in the uh, to do all those, um, to come to know all those um, physical and chemical uh, types of analysis, as well as one day in the microbiological lab to uh, come to come to know all the all the microbiological things, um, and then well. We are also producing in a, in, a, in a practical work on malting. We are producing a malt well, with different different uh, exercises we are doing there. Um, for example, this year we produced um, also well, the, the people in the class produced a malt out of uh, winter barley to, to, to come to know the differences in the treatment and differences in quality later on, what is possible. And definitely we have uh, practical work in brewing. Uh, so several uh, brews we are doing. Um, we changed this, changed this during the years when I started uh, here in, at the VLB uh, well, about 10 years ago to, and became responsible for the classes. Uh, it was still like, like in the university uh, studies here in brewery technology that the people just only brewed one time. They had one practical work. Um, and meanwhile, we are doing approximately 18, 18 brews. Mm -hmm. So everybody uh, uh, during this half of year will do at least four brews um, in the in our pilot plant. So you get a Starting, you get a pilot plant at the school, and and you get a chance to brew brew as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we are we are brewing here. We, uh, normally, um, well, the first brew that we are doing with the class uh, with the classes. Well, we we split normally the classes down in in, in small groups, because with practical work, uh, well, I have the experience. It's definitely better to have as small groups as possible, mm -hmm. and therefore uh, we have several brewing weeks um, uh, in the schedule. And the first brew is just to come to know the plant itself, how to to manage the plant. Um, and now there we are brewing a standard standard beer here for the VLB. So when you say um, a, when you say a pilot system, how large is your pilot system? It's uh, approximately uh, two hectoliters. Two two hundred liters. I got to think. Two hundred. Yeah, it's it's two hundred liters. liters is uh, yeah. let's see. Got to do the math here. Trying to do math in my head always a dangerous thing. <laughs> fifty gallons. Fifty gallons, roughly. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, and well, for the second brew, then uh, they have to do a, well real scientific work, and they have to uh, write uh, to write a report about this. And um, this also will be rated that uh, the people will come in contact to uh, while well, writing reports because well later on if they are uh, in a, a work in a big brewery and their boss is telling them well you have to uh, well, find out what is happening in here and please give me the report in two days so um, they came to know here at, uh, in, in, during the studies how you will set up a, a scientific report. And um, then we always have um, a, well, kind of fun brew um, uh, included where the people, well, it's not really fun, but it's mainly the people have the possibility to, to brew what they want to brew. Uh, not not everywhere. Well, we we have all the possibilities here. We have all the the different specialty molds, all the different yeast strains in our yeast bank. So everything is possible with our with our plant, and therefore we want to give them really the possibility to brew whatever they want to do. Excellent. Uh, want to brew, and uh, the last brew normally is then a hop brewing contest. Uh, and well, it's changing from year to year. One year we normally uh, are supported by uh, the U.S. hop growers, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the following year then we do the same with the German hop growers that are uh, they are sponsoring. So we have a really really good uh, hop brewing contest, mainly focused on hops then. And so we will come to the to, to the total amount of approximately 18 brews during the whole class. Well, I wanted to ask you this question while we're on the topic of the pilot brewing. Um, 
What are some of the challenges you run into when you switch over from a pilot brew and you try and scale it up to something commercial, something full scale? This is a question I get all the time from people that are just starting out in professional brewing. <laughs> well, I I think the, the the problem is not so much uh, to 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 upscale your recipes and upscale everything from 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 a pilot plant like ours uh, to 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 a, a bigger plant. Mm-hmm. It's um, the the main challenge is mainly to switch from home brewing from a pot on on an oven um, to to a bigger system because right. uh, in here. Well, if you if you see uh, our pilot plant, where it's fully fully uh, to absolutely uh, automated, so you have all the different parameters that you can switch, um, and therefore, uh, but this is also the reason why we have a pilot plant because uh, we are also doing recipe development for for bigger breweries um, and research work for bigger breweries, and therefore, but you, it has to be comparable in a special way to the big plants. Um, but the, the the main thing is well. I am the opinion that if you want to switch from from home brewing or from a small scale brewing, so from the garage to a business, mm-hmm. the, f- the first thing uh, is to understand the business. So understand. Yeah, that was, brewing. Uh, well, that was another uh, question I actually had written down. Um, what do you guys teach the business end of things? Because when I talk to a number of my friends that have made this leap, that have gone from you know, brewing a couple batches of beer in their garage or something like that into uh, actually running a, you know, a small brew pub or perhaps a uh, small brewery. Um, most of them said the biggest challenge is not the beer. It's actually the business end of things. Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is well. But, well, I came to know a couple of people um, who, were, uh, who are great brewers. Um, they know the business of brewing, but uh, they have um, normally problems with the other part of the business, yeah. so set the beer and so on. But this is also not, nothing that we really, really teach here at the VLB. Mm-hmm. Um, well, therefore, you have to go to a business school. Right. Um, well, what we are delivering here is well the knowledge, knowledge in in beer brewing, and well to uh, to give this knowledge to the people half a year is not very much. So if somebody will come here to, to the VLB to study this in the, in the certified brewmaster class, you can be sure that it will never get boring. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it sounds like it's pretty packed six months. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what role, uh, what role do apprenticeships play in, uh, in becoming a pro brewer? Yeah, I know some friends who have spent years as an apprentice before they became the master brewer somewhere. Yeah, well, I think uh, in here we have to 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 see that in the pre- uh, the the education in Germany is uh, in, in in the brewing is in total a little bit different to 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 the international brewing world because um, in Germany we have this old and traditional system of apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. So normally, uh, if you if you are starting the craft business, for example, brewing, you are, uh, you have to do an apprenticeship in a brewery, and this is normally about three years. Um, and then afterwards, you are a, certifi- uh, a certified brewer. Mm-hmm. Definitely, um, and then you are normally starting. Well, if you, if you want to have further education, you have the possibility to go to the university or, for example, um, to the VLB. Because for the university, normally you have also must have your your A levels um, that you can start. Uh, and what's what's it, an A level for people that aren't familiar with that term? Well, here in Germany, we have we have. Um, 13 years of school mm-hmm. of, of, of the normal school and right. then you well, and the and the A levels um make it possible that you can go to the university I see so it so. probably be something like maybe a community college or some well it's in in Germany it's called abitur mm-hmm. um and well, in England, it's called A-Levels. Well, mm-hmm. I also saw it in, in America, it's A-Levels. But well, it, it is uh, the yeah. possibility that you uh, are a must if you uh, want to want to go to, to university. Mm-hmm. So this is the thing you must show. Right, right, right. And then you have the possibility uh, at the university, for example, to uh, do your, um, well, I mean, while it's bachelor and master, uh, in former times it was the engineer's mm-hmm. uh, studies, um, and this then will be, well, how long did I study? Well, it was 
as uh, here in Berlin, it was biotechnology that I had to study. Mm -hmm. And the main studies then, it was uh, brewery technology. Um, it was about in between five to seven years. Well, you can even study longer. <laughs> of course, yeah. You can go to school forever. Yeah. Well, can you tell us about uh, the VLB and the types of courses you offer? I know you offer more than just a certified brewmaster course. What are some of the other courses that you offer? Well, starting from the from the smallest ones, it's uh, the a, a two day class, for example, uh, called Brewing in a Nutshell. Brewing in a Nutshell is normally for for people that are working in brewery that work in, for example, in sales in the brewery or. Uh, well, uh, in, in in marketing, for example, and they have to 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 sell the beer, but they if they do not have a clue what they are uh, selling, but well, this is a disadvantage, let's say. And while well, this class is well for two days, well, giving them a, a, an idea of what we are doing in the brewery. Um, then we have the craft ring and practice class. It's about uh, two weeks long. And in here, in this class, um, well, we want to give the people the basics, the basic ideas um, of craft brewing, of um, well, starting in the business, especially for those people, uh, designed for those people that well, are home brewers and want to start a business. Um, so it's um, a kind of kick in the right direction that they will wake up and see how deep knowledge can be. So most of the people that are uh, coming for those classes are coming here with a couple of questions about brewing mm -hmm. um, and think that uh, we will answer those questions. We will do this, yeah, but they will leave with much more questions. Many more than questions, yeah. <laughs> um, and this is the right right way because um, people are then are really – starting to think about what they are doing in, the, uh, in, in brewing. So it's not just only mixing water with the malt it's, or with the grist. It's uh, a little bit more, and normally they see this. Well, craft ring and practice is a class that is, well, like, like the name is telling you, very much a practice in here. Mm -hmm. well, normally, well, the design of this class is we are starting the first day normally with a brew in a pilot plant, the next day, um, we have a practical work in the in the laboratories, and then they have the possibility. The people have the possibility for the two week two weeks with a um, accelerated fermentation method that we are using. That they are really able to follow the beer from the uh, from the beginning to really follow their own beer from the beginning to the end. Uh, doing all the types of analysis during this week, like uh, well, microbiological control, the, the the fermentation control, everything like this. Um, and then in the end, at the last day, well, they have to drink their beer. And um, therefore, uh, the last and most important type of analysis, the sensory analysis, is done on the last day. Um, well, and in between, very much a practical work, also excursions to, uh, to small breweries, to brew pubs, and so on, so that they also get in contact with people that already have their experience in craft brewing and, 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 and in the business and so on. So it's very, very compact, uh, but, but very, well, packed full of life. So jump, jump in, the, in the pond of brewing. And well, then further on, well, we have several classes on demand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the big, uh, or big breweries are asking us uh, that we have to come there to, to, to teach, to have a special training programs and just in the single topics and microbiology or in, in brewery technology, for example, uh, those things. We also offer Russian classes uh, uh, for people in Russia. Um, we also have classes like applied microbiology that is also running in Berlin for people that want to, well, get a little bit more knowledge in well, microbiology, especially brewing microbiology. So those are the main, main, main classes we offer. So could somebody uh, serious about brewing here in the U.S. take your courses potentially? Yeah, yeah. Well, we always have we always have people from the United States, and uh, during the last years, also the number of people that are, are applying for for the classes is definitely increasing. But at the moment, we have um, a limit of fifty people um, every year, mm -hmm. and normally we split uh, those fifty people in two classes. Mm -hmm. 
because well, we we want to have this. Well, we are working with the principle of small groups. It's uh, much better in teaching, much better to to press all the knowledge in the different brains. Um, if you have direct contact with of people, course. yeah. Well, I do not. I do not really like uh, like like this um, type of lectures you have, for example, in university when when you have a fifty. S- Hundred people sitting in front of you. Yeah, we I had need, we had five hundred in some of the freshman classes I took. You know, yeah. but I but I need the the, the personal contact. Yeah. Therefore, I I uh, limited this to to twenty five people per class, and with this, uh, and it, you can split uh, the groups further down for practical work. Right, it's much better to do this in in, in this way. Um, I just want to switch at the very end for a minute about talking about homebrewing. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about what the homebrewing uh, uh, world is like in uh, in Europe or in Germany? Well, uh, I think also you can find a, a special revival in here. Yeah. Um, revival because in, in ancient times it was normal to, to brew at home. That is uh, was a cultural thing. Not normally, in every household, was was brewed and people were baking bread and so on. And then, uh, with uh, the the uh, foundation of towns, then it came to the fact that breweries or the business was developing. Um, and meanwhile, well, I'd, I'd say very very much of people are, are are brewing at home. But when I I'm looking here at the students, um, but I uh, also in my uh, um, CB I, that I sent you, mm-hmm. you were able to read that, uh, that I'm also the, the headmaster of the Berlin Brewers Guild. Right. And there we have um, also uh, the contact to, to the students of the Technical University. So um, diploma brewmasters and bachelors and, and engineers and so on. So get in contact with them. You, you, you see that very, very much of them uh, are also brewing at home and well, because they are brewers. And educated brewers already, they brew very good stuff at home. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just ask at the very end for a, for a couple home brewing tips, too. I was wondering if you had maybe one or two tips you could share with uh, the folks listening. <laughs> uh, read as much as you can. Listen. Um, learn as much as possible in practice as well. Um, you have to concentrate on the theory. And, well... Passion is absolutely important. Most of the homebrewers have passion, but passion is not all. Uh, yeah. You need to. You a lot need of passion, have, no knowledge. Uh, <laughs> there's a balance in there somewhere, right? Yeah. So it, this is, uh, I think, the most important thing. Well, you can 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 find various various of good books. Um, you can share your knowledge uh, for example on the conferences for example I'm always uh, every year I'm at the craft brewers conference uh, in in America um, and meeting the people there you can see how the people are communicating um, you what, what I find very very interesting is people that are very new in the business and do not know the others yet when they uh, well show their beers well most of uh, in most of the cases the beers do not have such a high quality. But what I feel very, very interesting is that after a couple of years, when you meet them again and again and again, just by communication with other people in the business, uh, well, really you see how the quality is uh, also increasing and uh, how successful the the people are. So the most important thing is uh, really... Get knowledge, get an education. Well, there are different ways how to get, uh, you can get education. Uh, if you are, have such a passion for, for what you are doing, uh, then sooner or later you will come to the point that you really need deep knowledge. Well, and then maybe we see each other here at the VLB. But, uh, well, other things are, for example, uh, well, other brewing schools in the United States, for example, uh, go to the conferences, meet people, Share, uh, share your knowledge, share your experience, and then well, you're on the right way, let's say. Excellent. Excellent advice. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, yes. Go ahead. Post. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Post. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's great to hear... Uh, uh, some of the people around the world who are passionate about beer and passionate about teaching people about beer. Uh, yep. 
certainly certainly enjoyed having you on, Burger. Um, I just is there any closing other closing thoughts you want to add or talk uh, talk for a minute about uh, education or uh, or uh, well, we, we talked the whole time. We talked yeah. about education and so on. Um, well, to all to all the people uh, in in the home brewing who want to to, to start the business, well. Well, go on, go on brewing. There's never enough beer in the world. Never yeah. enough beer. Yeah, yeah. I lo- I love Germany too because you can go to the grocery store and it's usually cheaper than buying soda or water, which I find. Well, which yeah, I think is well, great because. Uh, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, if if you, if you're going to 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 shop here in Germany, well, you can buy for uh, I mean, while a crate of beer uh, with which is ten liters, uh, sometimes for five to six euros. Well, even cheaper, but well. The, the quality of this beer, well, you, you never will find a real bad quality of beer in, in, in Germany, normally not in the supermarkets. Um, but, well, it's definitely cheaper. Yeah, if you get, get a chance to go to Germany, I, I, I've been fortunate enough to go just a couple of times and um, uh, certainly enjoy the beer. It's a, it's a special, special experience. Yeah. So, so thank you. Um, again, today... Uh, Today, my guest is Berghard Meyer. He's from the Research and Teaching Institute for Brewing in Berlin. Uh, Berghard has a formal education in biotechnology, brewing, and malting. He's head instructor for international courses at the school. And he's joined today by Jan Beering as well. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, a big thank you to Berghard Meyer for appearing on the show. Really appreciate him dialing in from Berlin. I'd like to uh, remind you to join our newsletter at beersmith.com. Just fill out the newsletter thing on the right side, and we'll send you an article on homebrewing every single week. And finally, I'd like to thank you for listening. Really appreciate all the support for the show. The show continues to grow, and uh, I think we're getting close to three-quarter of a million downloads altogether. Uh, Very impressive. And uh, we're also coming up on the 10-year anniversary for Beersmith, and it wouldn't have been possible without all the support from people like you. So thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great brewing week. 